two cameras here from Barcelona, different models, small C and big C, similar problems. Start with this one. Film advance lever won't move. Press the film release button. Check that the frame count is not on number one. Absolutely no action. Swings this far and no further. Something is seriously wrong. Curiously, its mate here, the three big C, presented with exactly the same problems. Press the film release button. Film advance lever does not budge. Two cameras, same problem, or same very similar problem. No obvious reason for that. So, I'm going to take the tops off these two cameras and it'll serve to demonstrate the differences in technique required for taking the top off a three small C camera with the dual range meter, the one with the metal flap, and a 3C camera, single range meter of course. They start off the same, open the back of the camera, something through the fork of the rewind, spin off the knob, I've got to keep these two lots of parts separate of course, I will not be cleaning them together because um, that way would be a lot of fun. I don't be like making a jigsaw puzzle with the pieces from two puzzles. That's the knobs off there. Now the top cover on the three small C. A single screw at the meter end. Two screws at the rewind end. And the top cover should just lift off. The three big C, or the three small C with a single range meter. You need to take the meter knob off first. I'm just, oh, that's, 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 there's something odd about that. That knob's not on right. That's on the wrong, in the wrong place. Okay. So someone's had that off and put that back wrong. Take the knob off. Then single screw at the end by the meter, two screws on the top cover by the rewind. Lift that off. Sometimes it helps to hold your finger down through the cover to hold the meter down in place. Some of these meters are held down with a screw at this point. Others simply hook into place like this one. Now we will remove the film release button in both cases. Or this case here of course I've got to remove the meter to get to that. So let's do that. We claim that screw. One screw here holds the meter down at this end. The meter's missing its piece of glass at the top here. Um, that's a red flag. Uh, it's possible that that's broken and that there are pieces jamming stuff down in the film advance. We'll find out. So we'll take the meter off. You can take off the uh, film release button and its spring and take that button off there because it serves no useful purpose. Likewise its mate will do the same. Now, I'll start with the three big C. Let's see what happens if I hold my finger down on the lock lever. The film advance isn't moving at all. If I press the release button, it's locked down. The film advance should move and it does.
and the shutter even fires. So there's a problem with the film release lever here failing to swing back out of the way. I do notice there's a lot of very thick grease here. It's oh, and the, the cocking rack. This probably won't show. I'll zoom you in. Do you see that speckled effect here? That's where someone has punched the cocking rack to stretch it so that it is pushed more in firm contact with the gear on the top of the film advance. It probably means that that cocking rack is um, quite damaged. The fact that it moves at all is probably uh, a wonder. So that will certainly need to be looked at. I suspect that's going to need replacement. But it looks to me like in this particular camera, this is the three big C, I'll zoom you back out so you can see things. It looks to me like the release lever here is failing to swing across, it's failing to disengage from the film advance correctly. Let's look at its mate here, the three small C. If I press the release lever, and it appears to be down, hold my finger on the lock lever, I still can't move the film advance lever. It swings this far and no further. The shutter release looks to be jammed down here. The piece on the side here looks like it's stuck halfway down. That might be an illusion. No, I think that's alright. Certainly something wrong here. Next thing to rule out is that there's a problem with the shutter. That the shutter's been removed or someone's been in the front of it and mucked with the timing of the gears so that effectively it's at the end of its tether and can't move any further forward anyway. So I'll remove the retaining ring from the back of the shutter. Pop that shutter to one side. I need to keep track of where these parts go, otherwise we'll have trouble. Right, let's see if that makes any difference to the way the film advance works. No, absolutely jammed, still exactly the same. And the release lever here, I'm just wiggling the screw on the top of it to see if I can get some impression as to whether that shaft's actually swinging. It appears to be. It's almost as if the film advanced locks is at the point it starts moving the gears here. Will the sprocket shaft move? Not at all. The sprocket shaft won't move. There's something jamming the sprocket shaft. Well, a bit of investigation's called for, I think. So, I'll remove the cocking rack which will effectively rule the cocking rack out from any part of that uh, equation. In other words, if the cocking rack was jamming the mechanism, it will no longer be jamming the mechanism. I'll recover that washer because washers are dwindling. My supply of washers is dwindling over time as they get lost or as I require them to shim some component. It's out with this rack. I won't know about the condition of that until I've cleaned it. So I'm looking down here at the film advance gears near here. There's, there's something, here's the foreign body. 
and it's a chip of glass. Now I did say that the loss of the glass on the top of the meter was possibly a red flag. And that'll be it. Almost certainly the glass has got down here, there's bits of it everywhere here. It's crunched up in the gears and they will not turn. I think I can, um, let's see what happens if I press the rewind button which will disconnect the gear on the sprocket shaft from the take up. Let's see if we can get this to turn as soon as I did it. I'm just got to hold it enough. I haven't got enough fingers here. No, it's still jammed up solid. Oh, there's another chip of glass. There's a piece of glass that's been swept in underneath here and jamming up the gear on this piece, I think. Let's have a look. So if I hold the button up, the sprocket shaft can rotate. I'm holding the rewind button in. There's no problem with the sp sprocket shaft itself, but I'm seeing more and more pieces of glass here. I think need to delve a bit deeper. I'll remove the screw from the top of the film advance. That's the gear here that drives the shutter cocking rack. This drive dog drives the film advance. You take up spool. Oh look, there's another chip of glass. Oh, there's more in here. There's glass sitting in little pieces all over the top of that gear. And oh, there's more down in here. Will it move yet? Oh, look at that. Film Advance moves now. Wants to stick at the end of the stroke, I would say, at a guess that the lever down here may be a bit stressed if someone's tried to unjam it and here it's just a whole heap of small bits of glass no doubt in my mind now that that's what's happened that this cover slip on here which is only a very thin piece of glass like a uh, a bit oh, like a cover slide on a microscope, cover slip on a microscope slide. That's come adrift. The gears, the glue's given up, it's fallen down, got down into the gears here, been handily crunched up by the gears and is now jamming things up. So that answers that little mystery. Glass was jamming the winder on this one and I suspect that grease is jamming the rewind, uh, the release lever on this one, stopping it from swinging correctly. If I see anything else of entertainment value in here, I'll let you know, otherwise I'm just going to get stuck in and deal to these two cameras. I might put a segment at the end to tell you what i found. Just working on the three small C, I'm got down to the bottom of the camera here where I've got to try and get the leatherette off. Unfortunately, this leatherette is really well stuck. I'm not sure I'm going to achieve it. Here's the tripod socket. It's entirely loose. Those three screws have just um, backed out entirely there. Two. Yeah, I'm getting a couple of turns on those screws. They're just ridiculously loose. I've got to try and get under this leatherette with my scalpel. Unfortunately, it's not playing the game. Commonly with cameras like this, this is an early 3C. 
it doesn't have the chrome bodied edges, these are just polished edges of the aluminium body. Commonly the leatherette sticks really well to the aluminium body. That's pretty much the rule. If there's any element of corrosion in there, which is not uncommon, if moisture's got through here you end up with corrosion of the aluminium body, which effectively acts like a release agent and makes the adhesive much easier to break away. That doesn't appear to be the case here. I'm not seeing any corrosion on the body that um, would hurry that process up for me. So I've got to try and lift the leather. At this end, I may be able to get that to lift. It's already lifted round here as you can see from the tripod socket having been rattling up and down as people have played with the back catch release. Potentially if I can get that lifted off I can take my tripod socket off, take the screw off the end here and that will allow me better access to try and slide a scalpel blade back down from this end. It's tricky around the boss in the middle, and to be honest, this you know it feels like it's part of the casting at this end. It's so well stuck, you'd you'd be forgiven for believing that was a coat of paint. Never mind, I'll see how I do. Well, ten minutes has passed, and you'll see that I have just about reached the halfway point on this leatherette. I've tried various things. I put some naphtha down on the surface to act as a, uh, a lubricant, if you like, to help me slide my scalpel blade under there. I don't know whether it really did a lot for me or not. I've tried warming the leatherette up with a hairdryer to make it more pliable. And again, I don't really know whether that made an awful lot of difference either. At this end, there's a zinc plated steel plate. Now, typically the adhesive sticks better to that than it does to the aluminium. Well, it's stuck really well to the aluminium here, so I really don't know what my chances are at the other end. I certainly don't, can't get under the body edges here to get it to move. I'm going to have to work down towards it, I think. So far I've got the leatherette off without any major damage. I think I've got a nick down here on the edge. But that will disappear entirely when the leatherette's glued back down. This tedious business of lifting leatherettes was something that was never done when the cameras were relatively current because anything that took more than two minutes was be regarded as a waste of time. You'd simply strip the leatherettes off any way you could and as many pieces as it took and then you would get a new one from the spare parts drawer. Of course there are no new ones. I'll carry on. Well I did get in, I've got everything apart, and as you can see here, as I try and revolve this gear here, it just won't go any further. There's something stuck in the teeth of the gear, and it's, there's, oh, it's like a paste of rubbish here, there's bits of glass, grease, look that's the biggest piece of glass that's come out so far. Yeah, this will revolve now. There's another piece of glass there. There may have been a piece of glass wedging between here and the body. It's just a mess. But at least it's uh, under control now.
Well, the clock's been ticking. As you can see, I've got the camera body basically back together. Everything's been stripped and cleaned. Everything's working nicely. The film advance is very smooth. Nice and snappy in its action. Cocking rack appears to be in good shape. Generally speaking, I think we're on to a winner here. So I've still got to service the shutter, service the rangefinder, and close the camera up. But all the hard work, all the serious problem the camera had, has been now been dealt with. Basically, the problem lay here, and it was all pieces of glass. Little pieces, fragments of glass from that uh, meter window. And they were just jammed everywhere. All the gearing inside the top here had bits of glass in and amongst it. So it's no wonder nothing would move. But it had done no damage. Everything is still good. Once I'd cleared out all that rubbish, everything's been cleaned very, very well. And uh, everything's nice now. So I'll just carry on and close this camera up, really. Well, oh, shutter and rangefinder and so forth, and then close it up. Here is why the Retina 3C, Big C, failed to cock correctly. The spring here, the return spring on the base of the release lever, is simply broken. And that's what would have caused that problem. It would have meant that the release lever didn't swing correctly from one position on the cam to the other when it shifted height. So that's that little answer over. Anyway, I'm going to continue taking this thing apart. I've dealt with the three small C. That's a nice working camera. Now onto this one. Here is the end of that broken spring, which I found tucked up under the film advance shaft. That may have been jamming things too. And a number of things odd with this Retina 3C, the big C. It was, you know, various fasteners were loose that should have been tight. There's a screw missing here. Looks like it's been sheared off, so I'll have to get that out of the uh, mount. And the screw that's in on this side is the wrong type. I can tell it's the wrong type because it's got a Phillips head. And of course there are only slotted screws fitted to the retinas. So more exciting things to find. A lot of odd things with this. The rewind button was loose on the base. It wasn't even finger tight. Um, odd things. Someone's certainly been in here, done a bit of work. Didn't really know what they were about. That snapped off screw, which you can see is the little gleam of brass here, is into a blind hole. So it uh, could be entertaining getting that out. I'll drill a tiny hole down the centre, see if I can get something in there and encourage it to back out of the hole. Um, might work, who knows. Well, the size drill bit I'm using here is 1.1 millimetres. The same size as I used in an ill-fated attempt to shift a screw the other day. Let's hope I don't make, wreck this one too. At the moment I'm only seeing brass chips coming out of the hole, which is promising because um, the screw's brass. How deep is that hole? Not very. These are carbide bits, they are very, very brittle. Very sharp, but very brittle. Great danger that it'll snap when I get to the other side of that screw.
That's it. That's the end of it. Okay, I can feel that bit biting in hard there. I'm not going to uh, push my luck. Lest I end up with another broken bit. I've got another bit here. Which is a steel bit. Somewhat blunt. That's it. That went through. Went through the last little bit. Now I want to see if I can clear that hole slightly and um, possibly back out the remains of that screw. I'm going to find a very, very small screwdriver bit in my jewel of screwdrivers and see if I can bite into what's left of that screw and spin it out.